step 5.2, um, discuss Jefferson's Louisiana Purchase and show how Jefferson posed very little change from the Federalists domestically foreign, uh, through foreign policies and interpretation of the Constitution. So, in um, October of 1800, Napoleon, um, France, uh, secured from Spain in a secret treaty, uh, the Treaty of uh, San Aldonfonso, uh, um, this entire area right here, this was all now France's. Um, oops. And so, um, rumors of this transfer were partially confirmed in 1802. And um, when the Spanish, who still control the territory for the French, canceled the right of deposit given um, the United States under Pekin Treaty in 1795, the United States obviously is going to get worried. And what that means is basically under Spain, um, this area controlled uh, by Spain um, as of 1795, Americans were allowed to be in this area, in the, basically in New, New Orleans uh, t the Orleans Territory um, uh, f freely, right? Do business. They can use the river as much as they wanted to, the port, all of that kind of stuff. But under this transfer, um, that was going to change. With the right of deposit lost, this meant that most American trade in Mississippi and Ohio valleys would be tied up at New Orleans. Consequently, the American farmers would be unable to get their produce to market. So a roar of anger rolled up and down the Mississippi and Ohio valleys up through this area. Um, as many Westerners talked of either descending upon New Orleans with rifles in hand or of the following Spanish leadership um, in Jefferson and the United States government failed to protect their commercial rights. So to avoid conflict with the French and Spanish and to keep the support of Western Westerners, Jefferson instructed Robert Livingston, the United States minister in Paris, to purchase the port of New Orleans for two million bucks. All right, so just this area right here was on the table. This is what Jefferson wanted, this area right here. Um, he's going to get all of this, but this is what he was intending uh, through Livingston. In January of 1803, Jefferson asked James Monroe to join Livingston in Paris and offer up 10 million bucks for New Orleans and the Floridas. So he also wanted this area too, um, which was still controlled by Spain. There was no um, trans. There was um, Spain had never given this to um, France, but the United States wasn't um, aware of that. Um, by the time Monroe joined Livingston, Napoleon uh, had lost interest in establishing an American empire and offered to sell the entire Louisiana territory for $15 million. So all of this for $15 million bucks. Americans thought this was included, but Jefferson thought this was included, but it wasn't. But still, this, this is a pretty good deal for $15 million bucks, right? It came out to uh, a couple cents per acre or something like that. Um, so, on April 30th, 1803, the deal was closed and the agreement provided that $4 million of the $15 million would be used to settle past claims by American ship owners against France. Right? So, a pretty sweet deal for the United States. Uh, neither Livingston or Monroe were certain how much they had actually purchased when they asked Talleyrand. Um, the French foreign minister, whether the deal included Florida, he responded ambiguously, you have made a noble bargain for yourselves, and I suppose you will make the most of it. Uh, so basically, uh, you got a good deal, guys. Uh, don't uh, question it. <laughs> um, but later, um, so the United States would later get this area um, in 1819 uh, from Spain, but uh, until then, they did not have control of it. Um, Napoleon's, um, Napoleon's desire to create an empire in the Americans faded when the French lost the island of Santo Domingo due to military resistance and yellow fever. Also, the threat of a new war with Britain in Europe prevented France from sending reinforcements, and Napoleon now feared a possible invasion of Louisiana by American settlers or to lose the area to Britain if and when the war broke out in Europe. So he kind of felt like he was going to lose it anyway, 
So he just thought, well, I'll get some money out of this, this deal and then I'll wash my hands of it. Napoleon also had to consider a possible war with the United States, as Jefferson had stated. The day that France takes possession of New Orleans, we must make ourselves to, uh, to the British fleet and nation. So, so again, it looked like um, France was going to lose it either way. So might as well sell it while uh, it was a possibility to even sell it. So the, the problem for Jefferson in this, and it wasn't too big of a problem, but it uh, um, demonstrates um, the problem with political parties and whatnot. The Constitution said nothing about uh, the purchase of territory by the federal government. And Jefferson felt an amendment would take too long. So the territory was purchased by way of treaty. From this point on, Jefferson could no longer appeal to the strict interpretation of the Constitution. The Louisiana Purchase illustrates Jefferson's pragmatism, and at the time, it's a contradiction of his own previous political philosophy, that is, having a very strict interpretation of the Constitution. But Louisiana was so desirable that Jefferson found it less embarrassing to reverse himself on strict const um, construction than to lo lose this magnificent uh, windfall. Um, if Louisiana made Jefferson a loose con uh, constructionist, it made the Federalists strict constructionists. So you got this kind of parting, party, political party uh, games going on. These Federalists argued that there was no constitutional base for the transfer of, of the land, the same argument the Republicans used to oppose the Bank of the United States. What really worried the Federalists was that the signing of Louisiana treaties was the signing of their own political death warrant, right? So Jefferson had won up uh, the Federalists. New states would be carved up from the new territory, and uh, they would outvote 13 ch chartered states, including the Federalists of New England. Right, so they, they see that their days are numbered, and they, indeed they were. Uh, in his interpretation of the Constitution and in domestic policy, Jefferson demonstrated a loose interpretation of the Constitution, which was needed to create a strong central government so that the government might have the power to act in the best interest of the people. Um, so this is a real contribution of Jefferson in creating, whether for better or worse, a, um, a sense of, of nationalism within the country, tying the country together under a strong central government. Again, Jefferson showed his pragmatism by his willing, if necessary, to support the foreign allies of the Federalists to preserve the Amer American neutrality. In foreign policy, Jefferson demonstrated that there was little difference between himself and his Federalist uh, predecessors. All right, that concludes um, 5.2, um, so we'll get, be on 5.3 um, for the next segment. I'll talk to you guys later.